first of all, thank you all for coming. It's, it's actually it's pretty overwhelming, I gotta say. Um, so, let's see. Um, what I did in my research, uh, I used this, uh, this principle called uh, holography. And um, I'm not going to explain exactly what it means or why it's even called holography because I don't want to go into too many uh, details. But um, what I want to say is it, it, it will, you will see that it sort of comes down to comparing apples and oranges. So, um, so first of all, I did my uh, PhD in uh, theoretical physics. Um, and I'd like to sort of tell you a little bit what we do in theoretical physics, what it even means. So first of all, we don't sit in laboratories and, and tune and read meters and all of that. What we do is uh, we describe nature with mathematical models. And um, when a mathematical model is, is strong enough to describe the physics that we want to describe, it's, it gets sort of elevated to what we call a theory. Um, so how do we get from a mathematical model to a theory? So the method is as follows. It's, it's, it's kind of, well, it's, it's very simple. You sort of guess what a model is. You sort of, you, it's sort of an educated guess. So I guess this is really sort of where the clever physicists are sort of more successful than the not so clever ones maybe. And then the hard work goes into the next step, namely that is to work out the consequences of this model, so to see like what follows if I assume this, what, what follows from that. That's really where sort of 90% of the work goes into in physics, in theoretical physics. Um, so, and then what you do is you check whether this is consistent, whether these consequences are consistent with observations. And um, so in, this, this is sort of the paradigm for, this has been the paradigm for, for very long. In modern theoretical physics, sometimes it's not possible to actually um, make clear, like direct observations. And then what you do is you check whether, these, whether this model is consistent with the underlying mathematics. So this is, this is for instance, what we do in, in string theory. So when we want to describe nature, when we describe nature, what, what, what you want to do is you want to describe how things move, how things interact, and how things sort of bump into each other and what happens. Um, in order to do that, you have to know what the fundamental forces are between the different constituent particles that you would, or whatever stuff you're talking about. So, um, so the fundamental forces, as we know now, so the first one that, that we sort of, uh, us people, human beings, found out about was gravity because it's kind of the most obvious one because you see it at very long distance scales. So, you know, this, so this is like the little picture of the sun uh, with the earth orbiting around and then the moon in turn orbiting around the earth. Uh, and, and the theory of gravity explains exactly how, how this works. Then there's electromagnetism. So we all know about electricity, well, sort of. At least most people think they know about electricity. <laughs> and, uh, and magnets, you know, exactly what a magnet does. And, and they're sort of together intertwined into what we call electromagnetism. For instance, you can generate a uh, magnetic field by just uh, making a circular current, electrical current. Um, and then the other two forces are the strong and the weak nuclear forces. Those are a little bit more obscure, but they basically have to do with the, with the structure of, uh, of nuclei. And um, these, the last two, the, the bottom two uh, forces, fundamental forces, well, bottom three, I should say, they fit together really nicely in the, the, what we call the standard model of particle physics. So this, is a, this box is really the theory of the very small and you see that gravity, in a way, is sort of the odd one out, and it doesn't fit into this nice picture. So if we put this a different way, we can talk about apples and oranges, um, where the three fundamental forces that were described in the standard model of particle physics are the three apples that you see there. So this is a theory of the very small object. Then we have another 
we have another theory, which is gravity, which is the, the odd one out. It's, it's, the, it's the orange among the other apples. And um, so like I just said, the, the apples really sort of represent the, the, they're very sort of, those theories are very successful at short distances. And gravity is very successful at very long distances. So in principle, there's no reason why they should somehow be the same. But the problem is, in certain situations, you really have to use both uh, theories at the same time, and you get nonsense. You get nonsensical answers. And the reason why is, at least naively, you'd say, you cannot compare apples and oranges. And, okay, and then here comes string theory. String theory, we just represent as a tree. And all of, the, all of the sort of theory of the very small or all these apples, so that, that's what we call sort of the standard model or particle physics type uh, models. And then we have the theory of the very small, which is a uh, very large objects, and that's, that's gravity. And it's sitting in the same tree. So in a way, string theory is sort of an overarching framework in which you sort of describe, um, well, all of the, all of the fundamental forces that, that we know are present in nature. Um, so this is already quite strange, right? Like, I mean, you've never seen a tree that actually has both apples and oranges. But, so, it doesn't even, the fact that you find it strange is not even, it doesn't even, how do you say? It's even stranger to find a, find a, a theory that actually does uh, both gravity and uh, theory of very small things, which, which is quantum mechanics. Um, so, from string theory, we found out that there's, there's yet another relationship between apples and oranges, between gravity and, uh, well, the theory of the very small, like particle physics or quantum physics. Uh, and it's kind of, the way I represent it here is just, uh, you know, from, from the outside, this, this apple looks like a perfectly normal apple. But as it turns out, when you really start to look at what's going on uh, in the middle of the thing, you see that it actually is an orange in a way. It's kind of an apple and an orange at the same time. So this allows for a translation between a, a theory of gravity and a theory of, uh, of well, of particle physics. Um, so in order to, to sort of give a, give a brief hint of uh, what I've done, um, so th this little diagram shows you sort of what directions uh, the, the non-classical physics can go into. So classical physics is, is really about objects that are relatively slow and relatively big. So relatively big, I'm talking about, say, a billiard ball, which is so much bigger than, you know, a, a subatomic particle. Uh, and slow, I'm, ju I'm just talking about what the sort of velocities that we're used to, like when you throw uh, I don't know, a billiard ball. <laughs> um, so when, when you go from the left to the right, uh, and so if you go very fast, you get uh, the theory that describes that best is uh, relativity. So, you're, so your system is relativistic. Then from up to down, you see that uh, quantum physics doesn't work, or classical physics doesn't work anymore, and we need quantum mechanics. Um, and then, of course, the natural question to ask is what happens if we do both, and then we have to combine both quantum mechanics and relativity. As it turns out, um, the, type, the types of sort of theories that you can describe with holography uh, are these ones, difficult ones, but they turned out to be a lot easier to describe with holography. Um, so these are already well described by holography. It's sort of the, best known case. Then, the question you, you might want to ask is, if we're talking about something with very small particles, like a material uh, has, say, electrons running around in it, we're talking about very small objects, namely these electrons, and, uh, but they can move around in a way that is very slow, so uh, the relativistic effects does, like, doesn't enter, so we're sort of on that side, but still in the quantum bit. And these ones are actually not yet described by holography. Well, I mean, now they have been. <laughs> but they, w they weren't described in holography before. And this is, uh, this is what myself and, and Marco uh, developed. Um, 
And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. So to so to 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 summarize, I use this 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 sort of strange property of uh, of apples and oranges. Uh, and, and what I've done is uh, I used I used gravity to describe systems that are strongly coupled non-relativistic UV fixed point through holography. And to make that a little bit more tangible, I translated this apple into an orange. All right. Thank you.